and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Anushka Gungadden, uh, our speaker today on the topic of connection. Anushka is the founder of Global CQ, the CEO of the Australia India Chamber of Commerce, um, who has partnered with us for this challenge, but also Anushka has personally supported this challenge over the last number of weeks since we started on the 15th of June. And Anushka is a former CEO of the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award. Anushka, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to be here um, and support not only you, but the two brilliant minds behind today's program, Shloka and Shayla. Thank you. Thanks, Anushka. And let's just share our, our story of connection. So as a way of kicking off, um, we were introduced by a, a gentleman named Kim McLaughlin, another Irish person who knew you, knew what you did, knew what you were known for, knew the difference you were trying to make in the world, got to know me, introduced us and connected us and said, over to you, seems like it'd be a mutually beneficial conversation. Uh, can you share like how connection has helped you in your life, Anushka? Mm. Um, big question. How much time do we have? <laughs> um, look, I think our example is a, is a great way to start. Um, so Kian, who is a mutual friend and knew, as you said, what we stand for, what we were um, wanting to do in this world. And it was easy for him to see the two dots and connect us. And what happened after that was really because there is so much alignment. So for me, um, taking that now into my whole career, uh, and I've, if I look, you know, uh, all the different places I've, I've been, um, and in saying that it's less about the places I've been, it's the fact that you need to restart again from fresh each time. And, and still being able to have a very solid, meaningful network. So not just, you know, a million people, you know, but um, a big, percentage of those of people you really, really know and are connected to. Um, so for me, it has helped me personally. It has been a big part in my business, in my career. Um, even in Australia, I only moved here in 2012, um, you know, with my young family, uh, Australian husband, but in terms of my career, work-wise, it was a zero started from, from nothing. Um, and I started that in 2013, so not many years. And you know, I think uh, overall, I've been very lucky to be with some great people I met from day one who are still around me. So I, I, I see connection for me, um, and I'm known, people do call me that I am a connector of people, but also of opportunities, as well as now a lot around cultures. So if I were to define myself, this is how I would say in, in a nutshell. And when you see all the different hats I wear, you can see there is that element in. Um, so a big, big <laughs> answer to your question, Ron. I hope I answered it. Oh, absolutely. And you said you're, you're known as a natural connector of people. Okay. So there's a you know, there's connection can often be seen as being very strategic, you know, networking. So what, what would you describe as the difference between networking and connection? Mm -hmm. I think networking is an essential part of uh, of what we do, be it, you know, to here looking at the cohort we have around getting that first internship or work experience. It makes a big difference. And when you are in a new country, so for our international students, there's no neighbor we can, who knows us, no uncle, no, you know, cousin. So you've got to start and build and it's not very easy to do. Um, but the difference between networking net and networking is, is how you engage with your network. How do you start those relationships? How do you nurture those relationships? How do you respect those relationships? And then from there on, um, how do people remember you? Because you can have a lot of people who are, you know, on LinkedIn have 10,000 or Facebook. Um, but how are people remembering you. I mean, it, Kian knows you, knows me, and it was easy for him to connect us. And, you know, I know anyone I connect you with or you connect me with, 100% sure I will take the time to talk to them because I know there's something there. We don't need to know what it is when we connect, but there's something worth exploring. So I respect and trust, uh, you know, our connection for that. So that's the bit. Strategic, I don't think is bad, 
but it has to also be respectful. And how do you want people to remember you, to, to think of you? Extremely important. And, and that's a nice segue to my next question, Anushka. You know, sometimes people want something straight away from a connection. So I know in our first conversation, we talked and we, it wasn't like, yeah, how can we work together today? Like, how can I make money from you? How can you make money from me? How can I take advantage of this connection? What would you recommend to students who are trying to build those long-term connections? Yeah, and, and I think the word you use there is, is long-term. And, you know, even us running a business, and I, when I was at the Duke of Edinburgh's Award, I had a, a young team. I always say that as a leader of a business, Nice, you just went a little bit silent there. We, do we still have you? Yeah, we still. Yeah, I might change my connection if um, that happens. No worries, no worries. <laughs> take your time. So just, just while Anushka is doing that, uh, just take a moment to reflect. Do, does anyone have any questions for Anushka before you're anything coming to mind? Now, we'll, we'll, looks like we'll, are you okay, Anushka? Connection okay? Yeah, yeah. can perfect. you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thank oh, you. Good. Talk about connection, hey? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, where were we? You, you, yeah, there we go. We're talking about the, the long, so tips. What, 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 Dan, um, we talked about what tips could you give for students? And we talked about, you, you said, taking a long term view of connection, not a short term view. Yeah. And, and you will see, maybe you meet someone today who might not be able to offer you the job because at the moment, maybe you want a job. Um, however, that person nurturing that relationship can result in an even better opportunity much later in your career. So don't get into relationship or connections and network quickly into, you know, what's in it for me quickly, because you need to, you know, like um, Shloka and your introduction about me it's very humbling to hear that because on one hand i want you know i want to give you the confidence that yes you can do everything i have done and, and faster because these days we have technology and you've got access to people like myself through technology much easier than when ronan and i were <laughs> your age but we're not today. that old we're not that old <laughs> oh, there was no internet <laughs> hey <laughs> before the internet yes yeah so uh, so that, that's one part of it. But on the other hand is being mindful that um, even 15, 20 minutes of someone's time sometimes is a lot. And what you make of that time and how you use that time is where you need to be strategic. Because going in and thinking, oh, I'm going to get a job. Can you give me a job? Well, you're not going to get a job with that kind of conversation. 100% guaranteed. Um, it's also thinking, how can you nurture? What can you bring? And well, what can you learn? Learning is an important part of, of that growth, of that relationship. You're very passionate about respectful connection, Anushka. Mm. Can you share a little bit about that, please? I, I am because uh, I, you know, I've come to Australia and just using Australia as an example, not very, very long ago, if you look at it, and you know, in, in, I'm in Melbourne. Often you will hear it's the old boys club and, you know, uh, private school and all of that, which is very true. But at the same time, in, in that sense, I am a complete outsider. Yet I have been very, very well received, very, very well supported. And if today I pick the phone up and I call someone and I say, I'd like you to take 15 minutes and speak to Shayla, that person will do it because I do not use an abuse relationship. And if someone, you know, like let's say with, with, uh, with our relationship here, Ronan, um, you know, very, it's like it's, we were introduced through someone called Kian once, but over the time that we've been connected, there's been moments where I've, I've gone back and said, oh my God, you've done this and you can't believe the conversations I just had today with Ronan. So, you know, and, and let's say we were to, I don't know, in you do a business deal with someone, someone did an introduction, and then there is more to it, I would go back to that source connection and make sure they know, because it takes a long time to build relationship. We haven't quite created a, a business model where we are monetizing connection as such. Uh, 
So for someone, it takes 20, 15, 20 years to build a relationship. In five minutes, because of the trust they have, they will introduce you. So you have not, you know, you, you've got 20 years just there. So how you deal with that is extremely important. Mm. And that's what I mean around, around uh, re respectful relationship and, and, and really nurturing. Otherwise, you know, who will give me the day of time if I just abuse relationships and connections? <laughs> And Ashka, I'm sure many people are, are, are listening here or on a call today going, wow, I'd, I'd love to have some of the attributes or maybe the mindset that, that Anushka has. So what would you describe are some of your strong attributes or the mindset you have to connect? Um, well, for myself and also for others, because I really do connect people with opportunities, is um, not to have a, a you know, a, a a small mind around when you go into a, a conversation um, and also thinking you know, I need to get out get something out of that don't be so transactional so I'm not I would often have a conversation and not even know what's you know what do I want to get out I don't know just explore it feels right so I also go with intuition a lot so if there's a tip I'm going to give everyone here uh, because I've got so many more years of, of life experience learn to trust your intuition very very early your head, your heart, your gut are all intelligences. We've celebrated the brain for the longest time, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for my brains. But there are also, you know, connect with your heart, connect with your gut, and you will see um, things differently. Um, so I do those two. Uh, I also look at some of the relationships. I, I won't say yes or, or meet everyone. I also, you know, value my time a lot. So if I do, and someone takes their time with me, I will value their time as well. So be real, go with your gut feeling and, and, and value your own time and other people's time as well. Wow. Okay. And just going to build on that. You said that, you know, you go with your gut and I know you are very strong on obviously external connection, but internal inward connection. Sometimes I can elicit a little bit of like, Oh my God, I don't want to go there type response with people. So can you share like what, like, what conne internal connection is meant for you personally to know who you truly are? Um, after I had my second baby and I was working, I had a very good career working in a law firm, had done an MBA and all the rest. I, I explored the world of coaching and liked it. So I went on and did two years of coaching certification and I had to create a model. And my model of coaching, that very first model was all connected. Uh, and it is around connecting the dots in your life, so internally, and then with the dots outside. So for me, um, you know, that's really been a big internal journey started in 2010. Um, so in, what it means for me is being very clear, very connected to my values in life, to my purpose. You know, Craig works at the intersection of education and technology. It's very clear. If someone comes and wants to do something else, it's not there. You might try, but you will struggle to fit it in. So connecting with that, connecting with what's important for you. What are the non-negotiable in your life? We will all make choices. We will all make mistakes. And, you know, I will continue to make them. Uh, we are human. So, but there are some places where you won't go because it's not negotiable connect with you know as a parent for me with my children is very important now with my health is extremely important you know as I grow older I want to say become more fit basically than I was at 25 so what I put in my head what I put in my body what I you know what I what I read all of that are important and those are the connections um it, it's almost if you and you run and ask me that on a on a podcast if you're on your deathbed and you know sorry connect you all with mortality at such a young age but it will change the way you live <laughs> um if you are there what is what are the important bits in your life if they are important on that day and today you know that you're going to live your life very very fulfilled so that's the internal connection for me thank you very much uh, that was a wonderful answer thank you Anushka. Uh, i do have one more question before we hand over you've done some amazing work in terms of supporting uh, uh, cultural diversity and, and, uh, and your work with cultural intelligence. How can, you, how can we support people or if you advice for overseas students coming into Australia and maybe you said you would feel like an, you can be an outsider. So how, what tips can you provide for people in terms of connection who are maybe coming from a different culture? Yeah. 
Well, first of all, I would say uh, pay attention to the stories you tell yourself about you. And I think for me, in my experience of working with other people around me uh, who, who would identify themselves and label themselves into, you know, the, this minority labeling is a double edged sword in my experience. So you can choose to call yourself a minority and start to believe that and means, you know, I don't have or I don't belong there. So make sure you tell yourself empowering stories, not the limiting uh, narratives. Uh, you know, for me coming to Australia, I, I, I lived as an expat in, in China. So my mindset has always been expat, not, not migrant, where all of a sudden, you know, I don't belong. I, I brought a lot of experience. I speak multiple languages and I'm not saying this for a big head. I'm just sharing, you know, you could look at it as an, uh, as an advantage or you could look at it as a disadvantage. Your experience of working where you were, the understanding you have before you came to Australia are all valuable. But I have spoken to so many international students who say, oh, I don't have, I don't have work experience. I say, really? Yeah, not in Australia. Well, where? And when you start to dig, there's some amazing gold. So your personal brand, you have huge assets. Make sure you pull them and you tell yourself those empowering stories. If you go in a job interview and you say, oh, I won't get this because, you know, my accent is not good or I'm not, well, guess what? You won't get it because you've just already told yourself that. If you don't believe in yourself, when, why should that someone else? If you don't invest in yourself, why should someone else? It might sound crude, but it's the reality. A combination of practical and inspiring there, Anushka. Thank you very much. Uh, can we invite anybody from our, our group today? Does anyone have a question for Anushka? Uh, I'll start. Uh, okay. So I don't know, many people might not be aware about your interesting career line where you have been an author, co author as well and achieved multiple awards. So, how has connection helped you in growing in your career over the period? And obviously, I believe that most of the students would like to know how the connection with you will be helpful for them over the future as well. So, well, in my career, I, I think I, I took a leap. I believe in myself. So, you know, I would go in. I remember when I was in China, I was called three times for a, a job interview at a law firm. And I come from business. I'm a trained economist and, and very much in marketing. I said, I don't want to be a lawyer. I actually chose not to study law. Um, and I'm not going to be, you know, a legal assistant. Why do you want me here? And it turns out we needed to create a new department. And it, it were after the skills rather than the experience. Um, and I, I, so I helped set up a finance and clients department of a major international law firm for China. Um, and that was the year China won the Beijing Olympics. So business just went up. So I think for me, I backed myself on the things I know. I'm also very, very, very uh, clear on the things that I don't know. And there's a lot that I don't know. And there's a lot that I don't know that I don't know. Uh, so I'm willing to also learn. Um, so if in my connections, I don't go in thinking, what will I get out of? What will I get out of today? Uh, I'm very open to exploring where this the conversations go uh, but in doing that people remember me for something that they pick in the conversation for my you know authenticity for my actual skills like you know i've been called a connector before i realized that i think we do that better for others than we do but at the same time i have a very strong sense of self and over time it built it built more i can't say 20 i was you know like this um but i did my mother and, and father always did give me a very strong sense of self. And then I do connections without going in what's in it for me. Um, and over time, people remember me. And I think that's what I would advise everyone to do. Go in and make sure you, if you connect with someone on, on LinkedIn, you, you know, you do a, a personal invite and say, this is who I am. This is what I've seen about you. Um, you know, I, I'd love to follow what you do and, and I'd like to connect with you. Don't go and say, can I have a job? For instance, you know, uh, you've got to nurture. And, and so um, make sure when you connect with people, you're clear on why you want them to remember you and how. Thank you, Anushka. Uh, 
sorry, I have a few questions as well. So uh, we would like to know more about Global CQ and Australian Chamber of Commerce as well. So. Okay, so I think this will be of relevance to everyone. So Global CQ is, is basically a, a our intention when we started two and a half years ago was to connect employers with diverse talent. So I can see the shift in the world and you know now it's even, even more and, and louder. And when you look at Australia, we've got half of the population who have at least one parent born overseas. We've got a huge um, student population and um, Australia is an aging population. So we will need more talent coming from overseas and India is definitely you know, where uh, a huge part of the global talent sits at the moment and will continue to, to come from. So recogni recognizing the shift in talent, recognizing the shift in the marketplace, again, more diverse. For me, it was a no brainer that employers need to change the way they engage to be able to get a part of this, of this change. Um, so I set up Global CQ to help employers recognize these opportunities and also build capability to uh, connect with these opportunities and part of what you do there that is relevant for you group your group is we have a tech platform that uh, is helps that connection and for everyone who's in cred 30 uh, student challenge we're making that free uh, for an annual membership um, we've got to put a few things in the back end so connect now but make it's not you know it's not gonna give right away but <laughs> it is coming because we have had to find between a few things um, but I would love to give that to everyone and in there there is a three three pillars an inspiration pillars so you know having this kind of conversation uh, I'd love to have an execution pillar which is around a program or some kind of uh, of, of accountability in, in the community that keeps you going. You can support each other and have questions and so on. Like probably we might do that with cred. So I'm not quite sure about that part. But the third part is that connection, uh, which is the networking. So what we offer in partnership again, and you will see my business model is very much collaboration and partnership here with one passport. Uh, it's a platform that allows all of you to have a profile that shows everywhere you have worked. Um, you can't hear me? I lost your voice. Ronan, can you no, hear you're, me? You're okay. You know, I think I might be just on Shiloh, so we can hear you okay. okay. Thank you. Um, all right, thank you. So in there you get uh, to showcase your data, whether you've studied somewhere else in the world, we can verify those data. We can also verify your police check, your visa, all this compliance related component, whereby you know we are showcasing that we want that variety. And as we build that database, we will then connect you with employers. So that's, uh, that's where Global CQ is relevant for everyone. But as I said, uh, anyone who is in, in tech knows it takes much longer than you would think <laughs> to get the end product. Um, so, but we're very, very, we, we're almost there. We've, we've launched it. Um, and now from the Australia India Chamber of Commerce. So there we work at the top with the big businesses, the big corporate. But I personally have a very strong focus on leaders of tomorrow. So you guys. So we are also, because of the challenge that, you know, started with, okay, let's just do this. We have now also launched the uh, Indian student membership. Uh, and again, we'll share more information once that's all done. And, and I brought that in with one passport as well. So you'll be able to go and join the database. And we're making that complimentary for everyone who's in this challenge. And there the idea is to connect you with employers as well as um, make sure you have a voice that government hears, be it local, federal, um, state government or federal government. Um, and you know, education is an area that I'll be pushing more. And in September, we're starting a, a four part series. So that will be bringing both sides of government together as well. So lots happening. <laughs> Thank you, Anushka. Uh, Ronan, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. And Anushka, we really appreciate you so generously gifting One Passport and the, and the subscription to the Australian India Chamber for students in this community. Thank you very much on behalf of the community. And uh, thank you for being with us today. It's always fun, uh, inspiring, and, and very generously shared your own learnings and insights uh, 
around your career and the highs and the lows because I know there are we all have ups and downs in our careers and I know even we're gonna we got we're gonna pass over to Charlotte in a moment just to help us complete but we had Narmi speak on Monday and that was a bonus speaker and that can, connection came through an idea Nushka had after joining some of these sessions and seeing the need that students had around navigating this job market. So the power of connection, you are a natural connector. You created that connection and we were straight away able to get an army to talk, to share very generously with on Monday. So Nushka, thank you very much for being with us today. No, thank you, Ron. And I think when you said that there, it may be one thing I'll leave you all with is the power of connection goes beyond you. It's also in the impacts you can make. So remember that. <laughs> It allows me to do that, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Nushka. Um, Thank you. Charlotte, can I hand to you now just to do, we do have a theme each weekend, so what are we asking people to do to connect? Uh, so, as most of you who have already joined CRED know that we have a theme that we carry forward for the whole week. So, the theme for this week is connect, and that's how we had Anushka talking about on the same aspect. So what we would like you to do this week is to connect with Anushka, connect with Ronan, even connect with both of them through LinkedIn, and also connect with a person on the community so that you can have a fresh connection with people who are there in the community. So that's what the target for this week is, to connect with new people and make new connections. Also talking about um, next week, uh, we have Kevin, but we had Gerard, Roshin, Mick, Anushka, and obviously Naomi as our guest speakers for the Great 30 Day Challenge. So what I would like you to do is go ahead and connect with these people over LinkedIn. Just write a small message like, I heard you speak on Great Webinar. Thank you for sharing. I would love to connect. And they would be happy to get connected to you and help you ahead in your uh, I would say not just career, but in your whole life goals and aspects. So go ahead and connect with the speakers. Obviously, I've told you about our bonus speaker, Narmi, whom we got connected through Anushka uh, to guide us through the aspect of interview and career coaching. So go ahead and connect with Narmi as well. Um, talking forward, is connection with cred so to connect with cred you all need to sign up with the cred app and i hope most of you have already signed up so please 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 go and keep on updating it on a daily basis which is an important task and obviously connect with us on our facebook communities so you can connect us on cred community for student as well as cred community so the student community is basically for the students itself but the crit community will have people across all our challenges and webinars connecting with us and also you can connect us on our crit page and last but not the least so we have our reflection activity happening on friday so join us on friday at 1 30 to reflect on your weekly aspect of connect thank you very much everyone Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks, Shloka. Thanks, Anushka. Yeah. Uh, if you do need to leave, uh, we do invite you to leave now. And um, a few of us can stay on the on the call if you do have any other questions. But thank you very much, and hopefully we'll see you on Friday. And thank you, Charlotte, for helping us complete. Thank you. I can stay right. a few minutes if uh, if anyone has a question. That's very generous of you. Thank you, Anushka. Okay. I might have a question which <laughs> might not be very relevant. Sorry, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of questions. Can I, think, can I, I ask I, I, then? Here, yeah. I've got an ask. I've got a question for all of you, actually. If you can ask. Um, and please honor my ask. If you got value from coming into this series and today, <laughs> pay it forward. Make sure others don't miss out. Go on my post on creds. Put something on what you got out of today. And that's starting a great power of connection by giving. So I'm asking you that. <laughs> Please do it. If you got anything, do that. Um, you will be connecting with a lot more people. So that that's over back back to you. Um, yes, your questions. <laughs> that's a great that's a, that's a great ask. Because I think one of the things we didn't talk about in connection is that a lot of times people can feel, oh, these speakers, um, I can never connect with them. But 
everyone's we're all people we all we all have a social need for connection and um, the the community wants to support each other yeah. Nushka spoke, spoke at the start about being very clear on her values and what she stands for so we're all values aligned we're all trying to support each other so I think that's a lovely ask thank you Nushka for that Over, um, Sandeep I think did you have a question Sandeep yeah yeah thank you for uh, giving us these insightful thoughts of our, uh, so my question is like uh, presenting yourself is like much much important when you are connecting with someone like face to face how you are presenting yourself to something sometimes it can backfire uh, other person might not like you uh, like how you are talking with them or something like that and uh, that is hard but it's much more hard when you are connecting online like on linkedin when you cannot present yourself in front of anyone so how should we deal with that how should we present on, uh, online as well as in person with someone and um, firstly for your first part about people not liking you i think you know just get over that everyone not everyone will like us once you know we know what you like what is important for you you will find your own little tribe and that tribe is quite big even if i'm saying little so don't worry about people not liking you because sometimes trying to make everyone like you you forget who you are in that process so that remember that part now um in terms of for me if you were to connect with me on linkedin i look if you you know do you have a photo I, I, because I get a lot of requests, a lot of people I don't accept because they don't have a photo. If you don't have, as I said, if you do not take the time to invest in you, do not expect me to. So I would expect you to have a professional photo. I would expect you to have shared some of information because obviously you connect with me because you've seen something that is interesting. So if I've taken the time enough, you know, not perfect. Everyone, we, I mean, how many times have I changed my bio nonstop? Uh, and, you know, so it's not about perfection, but it's about putting some information that gives me a good reason for wanting to connect with you. Um, when you send me an invite, if it's just a connect, I won't connect. Tell me why I should, you know, and um, what's the reason you want to connect with me? So that's how that first impression uh, online or offline, they, they, they're both equally uh, powerful and you can do it. But make sure you have a picture, you've got your name, you, you, it's a professional network, so you show up as required there and say, you know, I've heard this or, or comment if I've got a post, comment on my post. That's what you do. Find the pe people you want to connect with, see what they're doing, follow their work and do comment on their posts, share something if you like. You're building relationship. So don't be scared to do that. Thank you. Okay. Ronan, you are muted. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, everybody. Um, Shloka, you had a question you didn't get an opportunity to ask. Uh, it was on the same lines of what Sandeep said, um, but more on the personal aspect of it that um, in quarantine, everybody was at home. And uh, even though everybody was connected via internet and technology, everybody still felt the need uh, of connection, touch, and um, they, it, it didn't feel like connection because it was virtual. So in that situation, what do we do? Yeah, I, I think when you are remote, and I talk about that, you know, even as leaders um, for your team, it's really important to how we check in. And mm -hmm. um, you've got a great community with Cred15 here that really allows for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you, you know, find one place if commitment, you know, time commitment, even if it's online, it's still a time commitment. But find one community where you really feel you are you belong where they you know you share the same values and you can show up as yourself um, and stay in that community and nurture that um, it, it's it is a bigger struggle for us to stay connected while being remote but it's not impossible i ran a five-week session around productivity uh, where ronan was also one my guest you can see how we reciprocate our <laughs> and support our communities and while it was around productivity, it was also about that whole connection piece. 
you know, find out. It's also a time, sit with yourself as well. How many of us do know ourselves what is important? So we, you know, in Melbourne, in Victoria, we've gone back another six weeks of uh, lockdown. Okay. It's very frustrating. Um, but at the same time, okay, what can we do with that time? Um, you know, and, and I know a lot of people will have even less resilience left in their tank. Okay. <laughs> so this time is going to be even harder because we're doing it the second time and we were out. So it will be extremely important. And, and you know what? One exercise you do with cred to stay connected, you reach out to somebody. There is huge power in, in giving. In, in, and I'm saying power, it brings you joy, it brings you the right kind of, uh, Ron talks more about all of that, you know, what all the, the, the good, the happy hormones, all of that, there is huge power in, in giving. I hope yeah. I answered your question. Yes, yes, you did. Thank you, Anusha. Thank you, Shloka. Do we have any other questions for Anushka? Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Who's um, who can we invite to speak? No, no. I said uh, Shaila will definitely have. Oh, Shaila. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll, I'll take the last yeah. one from you, Shaila, if you have, and then I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> no, that's all okay. I, I guess you answered the question already, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All very right. Much. Well, thank you, Thanks everybody. Much, Thanks for having me. And well done on, on putting this together. Yeah. Well done. And we do. I think we've got uh, Frederica in the background here who's, who's been instrumental in, in, in supporting the CRED 30-day challenge with UNSW. Um, and so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of moving parts here in Anushka, so we want to acknowledge everybody. And I know we had Janelle on earlier and, and um, Chiara from AGSM. So there's a huge amount of people that have um, helped put this together. And as you know yourself, no, nothing happens overnight. So on behalf of CRED, a debt of gratitude to everybody. And lastly, again, Anushka, thank you so much. Uh, thank to you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone. All the best. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Sandeep. Bye, Nikita.